the end goal wasn't earning revenue on the platform. The end goal was clout, which I now have with 138,000 followers that I leveraged to position myself with these video game companies as a consultant because I have an audience. Welcome to the High Voltage Business Builders, a show where we interview people committed to making their next million through passive income using real estate, brokering, e-commerce, and beyond. If you're a passionate business builder yourself, visit VoltageB2B.com to get in touch now. All right, Jeff, my man, welcome to the call. Woo. What are the 59 topics would you like to cover today as we jam out here on crypto, e -com, uh, what are you doing these days? Gaming, TikTok, what else are we going to, what, what do you want to jam on, man? Well, I think that the current state of social media marketing and uh, especially organic is important, especially for your e-com crowd, because, uh, you know, everybody's talking about TikTok ads, which have kind of seemed to be replacing Facebook ads, but there's still really good marketing channels for both. But I think also that Right now, I don't know how long this runway is, but TikTok's algorithm is insane. And you better build as much of an audience as you can until they do what Facebook did and shut you off. Start turning it off <laughs> or restricting it to ads only. Making you pay. Yeah. So, Jeff, for those who might not know you as well as I do, uh, let's get some background. Let's find out a little bit more about you, what you're dealing in, what's your primary thing, because I know you're, you've got some cool things that are happening now. And you're doing a obviously savage marketer and you're big in the podcasting space and you've obviously been playing on the social media stuff. What's the cool stuff you like to talk about about yourself? 30 seconds about all you, Jeff. Go. In my past life, I was a Fortune 500 project manager who built virtual teams. Then I started a business doing that for myself called VA Staffer. That's a virtual assistant company. You don't know anything about that? Not at all. I love Mary. <laughs> I'm already assistant. married, but I love Mary. Yeah, exactly. Neil's got an assistant through us. Yep. Um, and now that company, by the way, since the last time I spoke to you, is up to over 150 people. So there's there's Very that. Nice. There's yeah. that. Um, moving pretty fast. And then I, I have a branding agency. That's my hat here, Branded Media. Uh, and my business partner, Trisha LeCant, she's the creative director. She's actually the majority partner now. You know, something that I that also happened to me, Neil, since we last spoke is I'm way more comfortable giving control to other people. <laughs> Did that have to do with something that we spoke about? <laughs> no, but last time we spoke, I was I was having an internal battle with my own control struggle. Oh, were you? I'm so much better at having smaller margins and having more time. And because of that extra time, I've been able to go back to my roots, which is from my childhood, my real dream, which is playing video games. And uh, that's how it all intertwines. So my other hat, which I left in the other room, is my crypto gaming team hat, my Savage Marketer uh, crypto gaming team, where I'm actually working with game developers now. You know, most people don't know this about me, but in my past life, I used to work with cool companies like Twitch.tv and Riot Games, who made League of Legends and uh, high res studios. I'm out here towards the Bay Area. So, you know, um, I grew up playing in a land center, you know, if no one knows what that is, because oh, I know what that is, bro. Not as old as <laughs> me and you. Um, dip, we used to do it back in the day with the dip switches and doom, right? Where you had to get everything took in two hours just to get it all configured. So like all four players could get on in the same time in the, in the land. That was computers was and happening. internet were not good and they were not no. as easily accessible as they were today. Nope. So we used to have to go and pay by the hour to go to places where they had good computers <laughs> and internet set up. <laughs> Yeah, before that, to date myself, it was called an arcade. And you had to play the coolest games in the local mall with a local arcade, right? And it was such a I've big deal. A few of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was such a big deal when my friend Mike and his dad worked at a government office. So they were getting the networking put together inside that government office because they had the money that we would go in there after hours and he'd let us in and we'd install Doom on the machines and then sit there and network them together so we could play multiplayer Doom when it was. Neil, first. I had. I'm putting on the Trump face, Neil. Oh, no. Hey, hey. Neil, <laughs> I had a computer. My dad and I had a computer game that we used to play. It was called Evasive Action. It was oh, a, it was a head-to-head -head airplane, like, dog fighting yes. game. I remember. I remember. And we Early had to – listen to this, guys. We had to connect to play with each other. 
over LPT1 printer ports. Those are those oh big ones that have gosh. 16 pins. Well, yes, the like 16 pin things with the rainbows on them. Oh my gosh. Dude. All right, so that's old school. Uh, <laughs> so I in other words, I'm an old school gamer. By the way, Neil, next time you go to Austin, Texas, because I know I know you're in the digital marketing space. Um, I'm I'm also faculty at digitalmarketer.com. So I'm actually a mentor for one of their programs called the Digital Marketer Certified Program. My agency, we are we are a certified partner agency. I'm a contributor to entrepreneur.com, Forbes, CEO World, bunch of new magazines and stuff you probably never heard of. <laughs> probably not yet, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean and I'm and I'm big in the in the gaming space. I'm I'm actually advising and consulting uh, companies on how to build blockchain games. Um, where in the past we used to play all those games with the arcades for the coins and for the cred and for the little end screen with our three initials, which, by the way, mine have always been J-E-F. So if you go to an arcade, you see J-E-F, it's me. All right. Oh, very nice. All right. Um, chances are if you go to Austin, Texas, and you go over to the – it's called Cidercade, which I'm definitely taking you to, Neil. It's Cidercade. You, you pay 15 bucks. And it's all you can play, no coins. No, that doesn't do well with my brain. So, okay, just let me know next time you're there. It's like two and a half hours drive, and I will drive. Like I said, really? I wouldn't travel oh, before, I'm but I won't get time. on. I'm like, like once, once a well, month. Well, then just text least, me the so. next time you're going to be in, and I'll, and I'll get down. It's only two and a half hours, but I won't I won't fly. Because <laughs> I told you, they're like, I'm not traveling right now. I'm absolutely not <laughs> traveling. But I will drive like a couple hours to Austin. I'm like, I'm like not that much of an introvert, although I feel like it these days. Which, by the way, Neil, that's a perfect segue into why I'm qualified to talk about this today, because it was because of my gaming yep. that I went viral on TikTok the first time. Actually, I, I, that's not true. The first time I went viral on TikTok was for throwing my two-year-old nephew in the pool and letting him swim out. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because all the people went in and started screaming. I remember this, started screaming at you about how dare you do that to a child. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, look, That's just, conflict for marketing. If you don't have context, my, my, yes. my sister uh, taught my nephew how to swim at a very young age, like before he yeah. was two years yeah, old. So like video. you throw him in the yeah, pool and he okay. swims out and he loves it. Yeah, but um, people get all freaky and they get screaming. Now, you may not know this about me. Just to bring the context forward, I actually owned a game server company when I was an entrepreneur oh. uh, during my days at Sprint and IBM. It was a uh, multi-game server. We ran out of Texas in game servers. We had 20 of them going, and we were running the codex for the audio that would allow the multiplayers to actually connect before multiplayer games had voiceover. So we had oh thousands God. and tens of thousands of people using our servers to do multiplayer gaming. It was called Killer Game Servers. Uh, and we used to run with all these clans and stuff back in the day. And so I was, I didn't Dude, ever get a YouTube I channel. I actually remember Killer Game Servers. No. We used to have we a were... Counter-Strike server through you guys, I think. We were a big brand once upon a time, and I never pushed it past a certain point. And I should have just jumped out of the corporate world and gone after it. Or I'd, be, I'd probably be in a different space. I'm okay where I landed. Just, I mean, that was a part of my background, and, and I played games. And I actually got so good at it, that's how I sold the service, is I just started pushing the leaderboards. Uh, with my username, Zero Density was my username back in the day. Well, and so while we're I, talking about sad stories about it. moving on, I <laughs> I was actually the CEO of a company called Esports Media. I had what we call adventure capital, if you guys don't know what that is. That's when someone who has no business investing in you takes an adventurous... Friends, and family, and fools. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically friends and family. Um and uh, this guy, his name's Dolph Santrine, way out in West Virginia. He's like, he just loved my idea about the future of esports and gaming. And I wanted to create a media company, a media company. And we became the number one streamer on Justin.tv. Nice. Oh, that's old back in the day. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I was in the email thread with Justin Kahn and Kevin Lynn and all those guys coming up with a new name because now gaming was the overall most streamed platform on justin.tv, which it wasn't designed for. The brand wasn't built for it. It was all around Justin Khan, which is why it's called justin.tv. And I remember going, huh, and he, he, they had a list of things. I voted for twitch.tv. I was actually at the launch party. You could say, I, I wouldn't say I was an official MC for it, but I was definitely one of the most vocal voices there being, um, you know, one of the head streamers on the platform. And, uh, Ironically, I gave all of that up and sold my shares of the company to a game developer because I didn't think it was, it was going to go anywhere. It was going to go anywhere. Oh, I have too many of those stories. It pains me to hear that. 
it pains me. But look, man, where you got to, and you're like one of the first people I followed organically on TikTok to watch, literally, because you were the first that was really taking advantage of that. Maxwell Finn has taken advantage of it on the paid traffic side, uh, really big with his experience over there. But you, you're you unlocking the organic. You and other people like Rachel Peterson and stuff I know are getting and unlocking the organic, which I think is favorable to long-term brand building, especially in the physical e-commerce space. And just staying in the gaming second uh, segment of this, if anybody on Amazon or direct to consumer is not taking advantage of their ability to get into Twitch and gamers and influencing and that media market that's heading towards the NTFs and all this other place, you're missing out on a huge amount of future opportunity or even now opportunity. I, I have three devices there. in front of me that you can't see. Um, one of them is this right here. This is a, this is a Nokia uh, earbud competitor. It's huge. Yeah. This is a, it's got a serious battery charger in there, you know? But, huge, dude. Yeah. Okay. It looks like, like five times the size of the iPod Pro. <laughs> and I also have these awesome head uh, speakers that you're playing through right now, which you can't see. And I also have some of these HyperX headphones and a bunch of other things, the microphone, webcam. Uh, I've been sent all sorts of stuff as demo products and getting paid. Oh, even my wallet. I, I'm, now I'm getting paid by Ridge. It's a it's a wallet company. They make this little rugged Ridge wallet. Um, I have made probably about three thousand dollars in uh, revenue on the platform, which, by the way, is just organically through the platform. I mean, it, it's and here's the thing: it's a bonus for me because I don't really care about the money on the platform. I care about using it for the relationships, right? Um, so these companies that send me stuff, I'm working sponsor deals, brand deals. So on the other side of that, you guys with the e-com products to sell, um, you can easily reach out using the collaboration tool in the, uh, I think you just have to apply to become a official. You do. It's just oh, free to apply for it with a business. Yep. There's my camera again. Uh, uh, you just have to go through <laughs> Yeah, every time I do that, I'm just going to make an ugly face, and it seems Stop to work. talking with your hands. It keeps throwing the video off. <laughs> I'm, I'm Italian. Ah, you, know? you can't do this with your hands. No, yeah, keep so, going. Listen. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, you throw, uh, you know, even the Ridge Wallet one. I, it's funny enough, I wanted to buy one, and then I got a message from them saying, hey, do you want to do a sponsorship? And I was like, okay, they're going to send me whatever one I want and send me 100 bucks, And I'm like... <laughs> I was going to buy one. <laughs> so all I did for them was just send them the, the video. So obviously uh, that's another good conversation, Neil, is you want to make sure you have ROI. You don't just want to send people product and, and money. Um, so for me, what I did was I actually ended up making a video. Is there a way I can, can I share my screen on this Absolutely. thing? There's a little share button right down there somewhere on the screen. Push the share button and go for it. Oh, okay. Those of you who are listening on audio, you'll have to go over to YouTube. I'll, I'll describe it. We'll describe it, and you can watch it if you're on YouTube for this episode. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what's up because uh, this is actually a video that I made. Um, and let me see if I can pull this thing up. Those of you watching on YouTube will have to watch me eat my tater tots before they go cold. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous of those tater tots. Those of you listening will have no. I can do the ASM, ASMR, AMSR, ASMR in the in the microphone. Uh -huh. I hate that, dude. I come across those videos. On social media, it drives me nuts. Don't be that person. I'm sorry if you are, but I cannot stand the sound of that. It drives me insane. You know what's sad? I can't even find it. But I made this. Oh, oh. you know what? I know it. I can do it on my phone. That works. Show you a quick clip on my phone. Yeah, it's called Creator Marketplace and TikTok. That's what we we're talking about. And in there, yeah, you can Creator sign up for business for free. Yeah. And you got a chance to do a 20 person campaign. I uh, tell my friends, don't always, and I tell my clients, don't always give away free product without some other incentive. And certainly don't do what we're seeing a lot, Jeff, is on the Amazon side, they're wanting to try to manipulate the review process by forcing you to agree to do the product through review and then ship them the money backwards, which is basically against the terms of service. So guys, if you're listening to this, we're not advising that. Um, oh, but there cheating. is a huge amount of opportunity for brand that referral links. So yeah, wait, well, you end up they're trying with to Amazon money back, huh? Well, it's just a way to to get a verified legitimate review on Amazon only to pay the money backwards, which technically, if you do that enough times, Amazon will catch on to it. Uh, you don't want to do that. Never mess with the reviews on Amazon. You are playing a losing game and you will eventually get caught. But uh, there are a lot of ways to get influencers. It works really well. Um, in fact, if you look at Amazon Beauty and you look at Beauty on TikTok, you may notice something. 
Really? Most of the top brands on Amazon, TikTok are also top brands on Amazon and vice versa. Well, I, uh, I unfortunately can't find the video, but it's on there. I'll have to show it. We'll link it. We'll link it in the after we'll, facts, but basically, yeah, like, oh, here we go. I found it. Of course. That's how it works. Every time I give, I should have gave up sooner. <laughs> I gave up sooner. Is there a business lesson in that? <laughs> it's it's actually kind of funny because I always say that I usually find something as soon as I give up. But what I call taking your conscious into your subconscious. I was just describing this on a on a training earlier this week. <laughs> there we go. Can you see my screen? Here she comes. Boom. All right. Oh, who's that guy? So what I did was um I actually just recorded this video saying that. I actually feel guilty about this. I definitely got over on this deal. Hard to believe I get paid for this stuff. Okay. <laughs> I can't um, believe they give me money for doing this. Yeah. And I got 22 likes, 10 comments, 307 views. And here's what's cool is these are real people, right? Like this is my own organic network. This isn't just like me throwing up a video to a bunch of random ass people on TikTok that aren't going to pay. Like people see my video and I sent them a copy of this video so they can use it for their own marketing. Right. So they're paying a hundred bucks for me to basically, uh, you know, create this user generated content. So I'm rubbing my, I'm rubbing my pants right here and I make a joke and I say, I got a bulge in my pants, <laughs> Oh no! but you can, but you can barely see the bulge no problem. and I whip it out. A it's your, <laughs> it it's your it wallet. Look at that. Boom. See it? No, actually, I don't. The video's not playing. What's that? What's going on? So then I explain that I, and then I actually, in full transparency, say I was going to buy this wallet, and then I show them how it works, and I said, I said I kind of feel guilty because I was going to buy this wallet, and they sent it to me with a hundred bucks. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's clever. So it, so I'm doing a genuine, authentic, you know, kind of advertisement for it. And the cool part is, is that like for me, and I don't know if this is the same way, because I'm sure there's a ton of people that will sell their soul for money on TikTok. But for me personally, I only promote things that I actually like and would actually use. It doesn't mean I have to use it, but it has to be something that I would actually use. Like, for example, earbuds, I would totally use these. But there's I mean, there's very few times in my life where I actually like putting things in my damn ears. Um, but I've tried them and they work really cool. It's just that it's not my style. Um, but they, they do work really well. And I don't feel guilty at all telling people about it, you know? So I think that you got to kind of mesh up and make sure that the audience behind the product works, right? Absolutely. Avatar, right? So obviously somebody who's playing around with a wallet, a guy, uh, is going to think that that's kind of clever. And that is actually very clever. Uh, to to push your wallet and your bulge. I actually wear it in the front of my pants now. I actually did this since I moved to New York. I used to wear my wallet in the back, and it was this lump that I sat on. So it was always so annoying, right? But, so but annoying. actually, I started, I could have took a different approach on that and talk about how I used to always have my wallet in my back pocket, and I actually used to have these weird, like, sciatic pains, you know, like in my back, where when you sit on your damn wallet and you're sitting on your ass everywhere, it actually, like, pinches your nerves. Right. So like in the front of my pocket, because I don't like things in my pocket anyway. So having something super slim like that works. Look, see, they're still making their money's worth on this call, right? They're still making their money's worth. I did it because I didn't want people to pickpocket me in New York. So I put it in my <laughs> front pocket and then I realized it was this like two inch thing in my front pocket. And I'm like, well, that doesn't work. It looks really well, weird walking around with a bulge in my pocket. So funny you even say that because now that I say it out loud, this is exactly why. So I got a thin line wallet that was very small and just got now, down to the basement. And started if putting you had in a banana pocket. shaped one. That there is no banana shaped wallet yet. How do you fit the cards? That would be a maybe you let me stick with the product design. So the, <laughs> <laughs> you stick I'm with the saying, you know, then people wouldn't be reaching for that thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if it looked like if it, it would be a, a funny anatomically, anatomically correct oh up my there. Gosh, the banana wallet. We may have just came up with the world's best fidget spinner. Uh for <laughs> <laughs> you'd just be like, hey. Someone comes up to you and it could be a humorous thing, right? You could just no, say, "No, man, no." What, I just hey, what do you got? Wallet. What do you? What I do got you a brand name for it. Say, Are you ready? I already got it for you. Oh dang it! You gave me the brand name. You know what we're gonna call it? We're gonna call it the banana hammock. <laughs> <laughs> we came up with a new wallet for your pocket called the banana, and I'm gonna have Jeff do all the media for me. You know, Neil, the very first time I ever got sponsored ever 
to do marketing for someone's product. It was back in 2017. And it was because, oh, <laughs> ironically, I was at a, this desk, okay? And I was in the very same scenario, except I was wearing a very expensive, like, uh, button-up shirt with a sport coat on. And I was giving a webinar. Each person paid $1,000 to attend. And my sister comes over and she sees through my glass office door that I'm not wearing no pants. And by the way, I hardly ever do. There's my boxers right there. And uh, she took a picture of me, which I was embarrassed of in the beginning. But then I posted it in this group called, it was called Screw the 9 to 5. And it had hundreds of thousands of people in it. And I posted the picture and I said, I now coined this term, I, I'm going to call it the webcam mullet because it's business up top and a party down below. Dude, webcam mullet. That is brilliant. And somebody reached out to me and said, dude, you're exactly what we're looking for for our brand. This is hilarious. The, the post went viral. People were sharing it and stuff and it had 100 plus comments on it. And people were laughing their asses off. And probably some idea light bulbs went off in this guy's head because he owned a company called sock and sack and they were like fun boxers that you could wear around a shorts around your house instead of wearing pants which is what i am you know i'm always in my boxers unless somebody has to come over then you know i have to do a 50 50 gut check would this person be offended if i'm in my boxers if not i'm wearing them if they might be offended then i'll put on a pair of probably shorts. put some pants on Wow, welcome to 2022, because uh, these conversations probably weren't happening in 2018 uh, until we all went home for a while, <laughs> and the whole life and style has changed. Okay, I got a question for you, legitimately, because I'm playing around with this, and I have my own TikTok account, and we put our you know podcast, and the reels go up there, and I know I need to be posting a lot more, and I need to figure out content and, and just like really start trying to post four times a day or whatever. Uh, to get that up. Uh, what What is the, you know, what would you tell me? Like, I'm here, this is just pure content and value for for my uh, business side, not my product side. But in, in the same token, what would you tell somebody who's like, okay, what do I do on TikTok? How do I do that? How do I get traffic? How do I make the algo? How do I go viral right now? If it's such a big opportunity? What can I do wrong? What can I do right? Step number one, go to the bathroom. Step number two, Scroll TikToks while you're taking a shit. <laughs> okay. I was like, why are we going to the bathroom again? <laughs> you have to really understand the culture of TikTok. Oh, I know. It's the culture on TikTok, it's a little trollish. Mm, it's a little oh, trollish. Really? Did you see my yeah, post the other people, day? I got my feelings all hurt. Yeah. People, people like, like, for example, the video that went the most viral for me that got over 20 million views on my account, it's gotten over 150 million views on other people's accounts that stole it and reposted it. Um, some with my permission, so I don't want to say stolen. Right. Um, it was curated. shared on Publicity. It was shared on Hoodvids. It was shared on the official gamer TikTok account. Hood um, it was actually a reply to a comment to one of my videos. So my gaming chair, my gaming rig, I got a $13,000 gaming rig, which is not in this room. It's in another room. Um, but that gaming rig, it was getting some views. It was getting a couple thousand views here and there. And first off, you can't go on there and be average and expect savage results. If you if you want to do marketing, it's got to be savage. It's got to be above average. Okay, it's got to be. Right. You, you got to do something that makes people curious. They want to learn more about you. They want to learn more about your your stuff. When people see that you got a $13,000 gaming rig as a grown-ass man with a beard, people start, you know, they, they get curious. Reality. They yeah, get they curious. Get, they get brutal. <laughs> they get mean. Yeah. They get savage. So, so, so speaking of brutal, somebody <laughs> responded to yeah. – uh, made a comment on one of my posts and said, imagine spending $10,000 – and still having a bad setup. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure people loved that. So I hit the reply as a video button, which, by the way, is really powerful on TikTok. Reply can, as a video. Yeah. Okay. You go in a so bunch of other accounts and do that. Yeah. As a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's really interesting about that is I responded and said, I, I found someone else's audio, which I thought was perfect for it. And actually, I'm the reason why I went viral. It's it, it went viral for the hashtag adult money. So I'm actually the person who coined. I love coining things, by the way. 
I coined the hashtag on TikTok, adult money. The original video was a guy who was walking through his hallway and he says, you know, living on your own is cool and stuff, but now I have access to adult money, which means I can buy stuff I don't need, which means I buy shit like this. And he lifts up his camera and he looks at a shower curtain and the shower curtain has a dinosaur riding a bicycle in a top hat and above it is the word <laughs> bitches. Just like oh, a really no, random that's so... <laughs> Just You probably got it on random. Amazon. Yeah. Right? Right. And Ordered by Amazon. Yeah. And, and think about that though. Think about how you could approach that from an e-com standpoint, right? Like people were like, dude, that's awesome. So what I did was I used the audio. So on TikTok, you can press the little button in the bottom right corner. It looks like a, a record player spinning around. That's the audio. You can click on the audio and press use this audio. And that's what I do. Most of my videos are using someone else's audio. And by the way, that's encouraged on the platform. It very much okay? is. Even tells you which one's viral and what's most used and which bot which audio you should be paying attention to. Which I've is why I like TikTok day. because I'm lazy at creating, coming up with ideas. So I just look at other people's ideas and I make my own version of them. Well, so, I'm super lazy. I haven't been thinking about that enough, though. I need to think about being Jeff lazy. Then I'll start to come. That's it. Dial. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You gotta, you <laughs> gotta be a one percent less lazier than the other lazies. <laughs> you mean I actually have to put the camera up and shoot the video? Okay. So, well, I was supposed to... Ironically, that's what I did. So I put a tripod up in my room. I just got one of those cell phone tripods. I I aimed it at me in the computer desk. And I did the 10 second countdown thing, the backwards countdown thing. So I would able, I was able to get in my chair. And then as soon as it started recording, I literally pressed the button on my gaming chair and it started to recline me back and it played that audio, the same audio. He says, you know, the thing about having adult money is that now I have money and I can buy things, stupid stuff like this. Beautiful. There's and someone and else's audio. That was it. And that video went so viral. And here's another thing that I'll tell you guys. This is why I encourage you guys. You got to post because I didn't know that video was going to go viral. I got like 60,000 followers from that one video. Okay. Um, that one video probably made me a thousand dollars on the platform. Not that, you know, like I said, that's not the end goal wasn't earning revenue on the platform. The end goal was clout, which I now have with 138,000 followers that I leverage to position myself with these video game companies as a consultant because I have an audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's smart. That's a great way to look at it. From the physical products perspective, though, you've just given a very simple, like two, three step formula that literally anybody selling a product could go borrow right now. Take a 10 second video of the product, find that audio. It's already inside of TikTok. Open the box, show the product. Boom, like just try this process over and over and over again. I, what you're telling me is there isn't like any perfect sort of like process for creating videos and all this other nonsense. What you're telling me basically is the more times I try, the closer I'm going to be to getting a right for the audience that resonates with me personally. Pretty much. Nailed it. Okay, interview over. Uh, I am now a TikTok expert. <laughs> and I, shall now be, I shall now be getting a masterclass course done uh, in which I will sell to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, for 997. Using, for 997. I'll be using your audios and stealing all your content uh, from your with permission because that's curating. Uh, I'll be curating your content. Uh, and that's it, folks. No, but literally, Jeff, you've given me some great ideas uh, today. And I really hope that those who are paying along uh, at home, uh, you know, could also take some of these concepts and ideas. So you obviously post quite a bit, try different things, you use know, the audio. I have not posted what I should be posting on TikTok. You, you know, Gary V and them, they're talking about posting three, four times on the platform a day. I post like once a month and maybe it's just because I'm kind of reserving uh, myself for like really cool ass stuff. Like, like, I don't know, because now that I'm used to going viral every video, like when I post something, it only gets like 2000 views, like. I, it makes me feel bad, you know? Like, I need more likes. I have a low self-esteem, folks. You need to help me out here. <laughs> yeah, like right now I can see my latest that's video funny. that I posted only has 3,800 views. Oh, that's that's so sad. Yeah, and it's and it is my gaming chair. See this, but at least you at least you don't. That's fun. at least you don't have to pay for yours. See, when I boost my videos, I pay for them, so they just look like they're getting a lot of traffic. When in actuality, it costs me a lot of money. <laughs> that's actually pretty sad. You know, the craziest part is. 
I a couple, a couple years ago I would have died. I would have loved to get three thousand views on a video, and now I'm like, okay, yeah. like I did a video. So remember, I told you how there's this trollish thing. Yep. So we, me and my millionaire friends, we rented the whole top building of uh, the whole top floor of the penthouse suite at the Palms in uh, Las Vegas. And we had Coolio come perform during the Super Bowl. That. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and I took, I took some cool video of it. And I, and I even said something trollish. I said, when your millionaire friends hire Coolio to perform at the party. Right. And, and I literally have this video of Coolio right here. Yep. I think that probably got a little more than 3,800 views, right? And I purposely oh. did the part where the saxophone player was going because, like, I know in my mind I was thinking, bro, we're in this whole room. Like, the only two black people at the party were, were people I brought, my my business partner. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, this is definitely not a gangster's paradise. Oh, my uh, God. we got the gangster's paradise guy here. He's got the dude singing. He's got the dude playing saxophone. I mean, there's just. It, by the way, he, he Coolio's hella cool and he rocked it out. But I just figured that without a lot of context and only uh, you know a short 10, 15 second clip, yep. I just wanted to let people's imaginations roll. And that video got like oh, seventeen thousand yeah. views. You know, I'm sure it got a lot of trolls in the comments. Oh, so many! But guys, <laughs> let me tell you something. Even yep. if you have an ecom product, don't delete the troll comments, guys. The troll yep. comments feed the algorithm. And yep. it's a beautiful thing. I'm telling you, like, if you just leverage the troll content, like, imagine positioning yourself like the squatty potty, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're intentionally making fun of yourself. Like, yep. that works. You're reminding me right now to go back to my TikTok contents and turn all the comments back on. So you gave me some confidence today. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, go forget back those bad. Don't even go trip. So many people are so worried <laughs> about the bad comments. I No, I dude, it. it's just. There's a big difference between Facebook trolls and TikTok trolls. Like there's different levels of trolls. There like, is. It, it's, it's amazing to, to me. It's just one of that parts of the system, I think, that is, uh, to your point, use it to your advantage, as I heard you say, because it will play with the algo, especially when you get a lot more content uh, on so, there and a lot more people commenting. And and I'm, I'm reading some of the comments here because I wanted to oh, you no. know, let Are you guys see what's going on here. Children? Here's, here is... The, one of the top comments. I feel I could afford this performance. <laughs> <laughs> that is like ghetto level. <laughs> Someone says I need a refund. Oh, that's Someone terrible. says when you order Coolio from wish.com. Oh, did that get a lot of likes? Cause that's a brilliant comment. <laughs> and someone says not a single person knows a word. Oh yeah. And then this no, one says, damn, Ain't nothing gangsta about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys know if you're in the econ world, you should not be sleeping on TikTok until they change the algo. Because right now you can play with the algo. You can get a lot of traffic. It's 2014 Facebook before they came in hard and heavy and started and jacking with the algo and forcing you to pay with the organic traffic yeah. content. So get in there organically. Build your audience as fast as you can. I got a couple things I'm going to go test out, no doubt, today. Here's three things to leave with, Neil. All right, One, let's go. What do you got? Start looking for people that have audiences that you want to be in front of because okay. you can sell cheap on there. And the reach is really cheap because organic posts do really well on there. Okay? Okay. And if you go, through the, if you go through the platform, you can do what's called a sponsored branded post or whatever where you can actually run okay. ads on those people's yep. organic posts. It does okay? a lot That's of a powerful tool most people don't know about. Number two is make sure that your content is something funny or humorous okay. in, in a troll way or, okay. uh, or, or at least something that's very different and catches people's eyes. It can't just be what everyone else is doing. Okay. Uh, number three is start building your own organic traffic by leveraging the platform for your own products um and you know making cool videos about it tutorial videos fun videos hop on trends that people are already uh, already doing and make it your own so there's the three things you can do today dude that's amazing guys take that with you and actually use it for those of you who are following me on the client side of voltage you know that we are implementing tiktok strategies 
uh, for traffic and viral and broader and product, especially around the Amazon FBA system and social media signals. And Jeff, you gave some great ideas today for those who are paying attention. If you're a direct to consumer, if you want to be an influencer, if you are on the physical product space, you should have took a lot from this call. Thanks for spending some time with me, my friend. And uh, do not sleep on the next time you're in Austin because I literally will go down there. Oh, and it's it's, it's on, baby. There's some. There, you're getting challenged. NBA Jam. <laughs> That's my game, man. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see Pippin. Oh, uh, don't Pippin me. I'll get you Bulls 94. Oh. All right, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, Neil. If you like this episode, please share it with people you think will enjoy it as well. Thank you for listening and be sure to tune in next week for a brand new episode of High Voltage Business Builders.